ooh, we're getting closer and closer to what I consider the fun stuff, actual research. But we need to have a topic in mind before we hit the books, journals, and databases. The content we'll cover this week is designed to take the fear and anxiety away from choosing and working with your topic. Maybe I can even get you a little bit excited about doing research on a topic that you're interested in. No, really, it can be done. First, we're going to focus on different methods to help you choose a research topic. Then we'll discuss how to either focus your topic if you have too much information or how to broaden your topic if you can't find enough. Finally, once you have selected your topic, you will need to be able to write a research question about an aspect of the topic. Some instructors will allow you to write a paper or a speech on what they call a topic of your choice. It's funny that this short statement can cause such fear and anxiety in college students. Librarians have been helping students select topics for years, as so many of you feel overwhelmed when given the option to write about whatever you want. We understand. We really do. There's just so much out there to write about, and generally not much time to do so. It can be really hard to figure out where to start with both choosing a topic and with starting your research. And, once you do get started, it can be frustrating to find that there's either way too much or very little written about your topic. Doing research for a paper or a speech or anything, really, is more than just finding and printing off a bunch of articles from the library. There is a process. And just like having a map can keep you from getting lost on your way to someplace new, following these steps can help keep you on track with your research. We're going to focus on just the first three steps this week, choosing a topic, getting background information, and refining your topic. We'll cover everything except writing the paper throughout the rest of the semester. Potential paper topics are everywhere. The news, the magazines, your social circle, your church, your work, and so on. The big ones have been the subject of intense debate for decades, and there's certainly a lot out there on these topics. But I'd encourage you to explore issues that aren't on the front page of a newspaper at the top of the news. The smaller text includes additional topics that may not be talked about as much, but would certainly make for interesting research. If you're not into a topic, it's going to make the process of researching and writing terribly boring. So, when you have the option to pick your own topic, go with something that you want to learn more about. What have you personally experienced? Maybe you transitioned to college with ADHD, or maybe you knew someone who experienced a severe childhood illness and you wonder how that affects the family. Are you interested in adrenaline sports like base jumping? What makes it fun for someone and terrifying for someone else? Or maybe it's something you're going through right now. Perhaps you have a family member serving in the military, or you're a non-traditional student. Look within yourself. You've got plenty of interests, I'm sure. On the flip side, don't choose something that you couldn't care less about. I will not be doing research on mathematical theory, as math makes me break out in hives. Still having trouble coming up with a topic? That's okay. There are resources and tools that can help you choose a topic if you're completely stumped. Talk to your family or friends. Ask what sort of topic they would find interesting. Look through newspapers, magazines, or watch the news. What's going on right now that would make an interesting research topic? There are also tools available, some through the library and some free online, that list topics that you can browse through. I have links to a few of these on this week's Moodle page. In most cases, you're not going to be an expert or know everything about a topic when you first get started. A good strategy is to start with something pretty broad and then brainstorm possible associations. Don't hold back. Write whatever pops into your head when you're thinking about these topics. This is the first step in taking a big topic and making it into something that you can do research on. We're going to go into more detail on this in the second half of the week. Let's talk a little bit about the art of writing a research question. A research question is neutral. You're not choosing a side or stating your opinion. That comes later with the thesis statement. Like a topic, the research question should not be too broad. The reading this week in Chapter 2 of Research Strategies goes into detail about pitfalls when writing research questions and how you can avoid them. One last point. A research question is not set in stone. As we start finding information about your topic, you may find a different aspect that you want to follow, and your question may change. That is okay. 
The thesis statement is a proposed answer to the research question. You need to state your opinion or hypothesis, which is quite unlike a research question where you try to keep your personal feelings out of it. A thesis statement can create research tunnel vision where you only include the sources that support your opinion. This is called bias. Thesis statements are better for those who have had experience with research and so you may not need to write one until later on in your college career. To review, after going through this week's materials, I want you to be comfortable choosing a topic even if your professor gives you absolutely no direction. I also want you to be able to find background information on your topic both online and in library resources. You should be able to narrow your topic to something that is manageable and to write a research question that you find interesting. There's a couple of presentations to watch this week and you have a few readings to help you get more comfortable choosing and working with a topic. The first one is from the required textbook for this class and the other two readings are posted on Moodle. The forum posting could be very helpful for all of you so don't put it off. The first part is due by Thursday night and the part where you respond is due by Sunday night. You will get feedback from your fellow classmates on your topic and you will return the favor. This is a great way to get additional topic ideas. The big assignment for the week is to select your topic. This is the topic you'll use as we work through our research for the rest of the semester. And it's what your final assignments, both the annotated bibliography and the short presentation will be focused on. So pick something you're interested in because you'll be stuck with it until the end of the semester.